Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Triforce Podcast 2020 Triforce Podcast. Uh, welcome back. Hey, P-Flex, how you doing? Doing all right. How you doing, Sips? Serenity now! I got a Serenity <laughs> now button for, uh, for Christmas. It's, uh, I love it's that. I love Frank that. Costanza. It, it, it only makes one sound, and that's Serenity now. So um, I love I love I was thinking about Serenity now in the lift yesterday. Yeah. Um, when I was when I was stuck in there and I was like just looking at myself in the mirror, just like thinking, man, do, do you reckon like okay, here you go. Here's my question about Serenity now. So Serenity now is from um Seinfeld. Seinfeld. Yeah. Uh, it's obviously written by Larry David. Yeah. And very much like the character of Not sort not of... necessarily true, by the way. A lot well, of the episodes were written by not Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld. Any show of that length, true. especially American has writers and like the soup nazi episode wasn't written yeah. by them i think they had a, a a really tight net team of writers that they worked with yes, a lot and they did. gave ideas to and and experiences oh, to and stuff yeah but i think the sometimes the memorable stuff some of the some of the i certainly remember a lot of these moments where you're like you know where larry david is like being told oh you know this is unrealistic this didn't happen you know this couldn't ever happen yeah and then he says well this actually happened to me that's why right, right. you know it's why it's in here yeah anyway I, I get i get the impression that like sort of you know larry david is of the sort of ilk where there were people doing this kind of new age kind of stuff back in the day where where things like serenity now is is a sort of one one way to deal with like stress you know i could i could imagine some guy living on a riverboat like alan watts style in you know like kind of like guru to the stars you know in the 90s yeah and larry david crossing paths with him and just thinking he's just a fucking <laughs> really annoying guy yeah um like who gives that kind of advice so anyway it's ready now for some reason i was i always just sometimes think of that like as a, i mean the, as the, a... the, the 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 funniest part of it is that he yells it. yeah like that's that's he he always yells it well yeah. because he's so frustrated right like yeah. it's like a, a meant to be a, a mechanism to calm himself down after he gets like annoyed or or stressed out or whatever but he's always in this like state of like utter fucking you know misery or stress so he has to scream it <laughs> instead of like just say it he's just about to pop it's a great moment so yeah, yeah it's great, great if you haven't watched um seinfeld and curb your enthusiasm i recommend yeah big yeah, thanks to our sponsors uh seinfeld for today's podcast uh, we weren't even gonna do <laughs> yeah. the podcast uh, until seinfeld reached out and they were like hey uh, we'll sponsor you guys to do one one last one we're like yeah okay sure i mean I, i'm sure we get the it's band back together it's new, for that thing yeah. It's a new thing for 2020. Yeah. Um. So so how are you guys doing? How you feeling? You feeling good in the new year? I survived. Yeah. I survived Christmas 2019. I'm happy to say I I took down all my decorations before the sixth of uh, January as well. It was pretty nice. Everybody. That's good luck. Everybody got sick over the uh, holidays. Like oh, not man. not not Didn't like they? flu or anything. Just you know just the usual colds and shit like that. So everybody was feeling like a bit tender, and uh, I ate way too much over the over the break. A couple of times, I felt like I was actually going to be sick from eating. Um, I wasn't though, <laughs> luckily. <laughs> luckily, close. Though. Yeah, I was very close, very close. Yeah, lots of heartburn and just lots of like, lot lots of waking up in the middle of the night with like what felt like a, a basketball in my stomach, like you know, like slowly inflating um, and making my st like. Do you ever get that? I don't know. It's like yep. gas buildup or something on top of like the mountain of food that you've eaten. It's like, uh, it's the worst. It's like a volcano. I think a lot there. of vegetables um, might like, I know you guys eat a lot of vegetables. So I, I think that well, when they're, uh, yeah, but when Six they're a lot of chips and cheese, <laughs> yeah, when, <that's> true. <laughs> but when they're, when they're digesting in your stomach, I guess, you know, there's maybe a lot of, uh, a lot of vapor and gas gets released. Yeah, must, yeah. It can happen. Could be. Oh, can I just say it's lovely hearing the bird song? Yeah, that's nice. Flat. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's uh, when I'm streaming, people always say that, you know, do you live in like a nature trail or a protected parkland? It's like, no, I just, I, there is a, no, it's just twicking them. <laughs> it's just, <twicking. laughs> it's, it's just a tree. It's just twicking them. It's a tree. That's it. But the tree wasn't there when we moved in. And you know, the, the Russian spy house, uh, this is an old Triforce staple yeah. that is behind me. Um, where I have not seen movement for a very long time now. Right. And in fact, their entire um, rear of their house, which is like one of those extension, I, you know, it's like uh, they've extended the kitchen out. And so it's like a, the, the 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 patio doors with the flat roof above it, you know, that kind of extension. What a coincidence, because my entire rear has extended out uh, after the holidays <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah. 
But is yours covered in trees and bushes like theirs is? Because you can't see out of their back windows anymore. Like it's completely covered in plants. Plants have completely grown up the side. I of respect them, that. Over I, the I roof. think privacy is a great thing, and I think well, I think yeah, in this day and age, too. you live really close you to people. Curtains, yeah, you. you know, I, I think. think I think. Money. I think. Bush it up. I think. You know, obscure your whole Bring house back the bush. in a in a wall of bushes and hedges and stuff. Yeah, I agree. well, something's going on here. Yeah, they let weeds grow in the garden to the point where when we first moved in, there was no tree, and we've been here long enough now. There is a tree in their back garden. It's still a young tree. Yeah, but there is a tree. You know so what? The though, birds like, love it. Uh, there's a lot of people get flack for that for letting like too many weeds like grow. You know, people that like you ever, you ever have like a neighbor or somebody on your road who just never like mows their grass. There's fucking like like tall grass and weeds and yeah, stuff yeah. and they're hoarders so like their house is full of shit and stuff yeah and like and and like they don't look like they take very good care of themselves and stuff like that when you think about it honestly it's it's like the perfect home defense system yeah because you're gonna break into no, that shit. nobody's gonna fucking home raid you are they like True. they're gonna see you their front lawn they're gonna be like that looks treacherous i'm not fucking navigating <laughs> that and then and then only to then get into your house and realize holy crap this place is full of junk like we would we would never find the 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 diamond necklace and the rubies in in, in this. It's like finding a needle in a haystack. Yeah. So actually, I think it's a big brain play to uh, be a hoarder and uh, leave your front lawn to get like all shitty. Honestly, and stuff. it is right these days. You get some estate agent, some posh woman. She'd be like, uh, "Let me show you around this lovely, ecologically friendly house that where where we have let the front and back gardens go to wilderness area to to help the local wildlife uh, inside." You, uh, there is a treasure trove of goodies. Uh, there's an escape room. Um, you know, you have to navigate the the small tunnels. <laughs> We've done it to make it feel big. But it's feel big, you know, but it's actually... Watch out for the foot traps. <laughs> if you wish to see the back garden, we will need to prepare an expedition. Now, there are local guides available. <laughs> but we do not have the provisions to make it to the bottom of the back garden. That'll be, you could, I could see their cogs in their heads turning. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> oh man fucking hell a streamer probably lives there i mean when i had a back garden i never fucking did anything with it just let it go all messy yeah no, this this is not just messy this is literally wild land you know like girl streamers i i'm not i'm not uh i'm not being um yeah, sexist i think you or, are by just anything. calling no, them no. okay but girl no, no but streamers. okay girl girl streamers some guys as well okay but Girl streamers especially, I find, because like you can imagine, you know, like you get a shot of like the, if they have a webcam, but no green screen, you can see like the room that they're in and stuff. And like, it's always like nicely lit and decorated and there's like oh, fluffy yeah, toys and you can like see part of their bed sometimes and stuff. And you imagine it like smells really nice in there and stuff. Oh, and yeah. it just looks like a nice, just looks like a nice place, right? Fuck, it'd be so funny if, like, uh, if you went to their house and the rest of their house was just, like, a fucking disaster. <laughs> like, there's just, like, all this, like, a fucking ring of junk, like... Just, just off camera. And there's just this cleared away <laughs> space just for the webcam. Like, but the rest of the place is just, like, this fucking there's like fucking dirty ass dishes with like you know like dried up ketchup you're, you're on describing them and my office fucking right cigarette now. butts like in, in the armrest their couch and stuff and like <laughs> oh man i've got two old cups of tea a plate from yesterday a couple of empty cans of cider and a load of boxes for things that i opened and i've still got the boxes because that's a very very dad thing to do i think is you open something oh don't throw the box away i don't know why i have that impulse now oh my god why to do you keep have that the impulse? box i don't know I have the boxes. Like I bought a um Mrs. F got me a Fitbit for like <clears throat> I say she got me. She bought it on my account. So she fucking I actually paid for this, right. God damn it. Because it's it's handy for keeping track of my heart rate, and that's like uh helps me calm down a bit because I tend to panic about my heart quite often. If yeah. if, it, if I can feel it beating at all, I'm like, oh my god, I'm having a heart attack. And then I look and I'm like, oh wait, I'm, I've got 78 BPM, which is like in the chill zone. Right. So yeah, it's it's weird, but it's actually helped me a lot. Um, and I quite like seeing how few steps I do every day. Yeah, you're trying to break like the reverse world record for like. I might least... break 50 steps today. Yeah. Yeah, the battery yeah. life on this thing is incredible. It barely has to work. <laughs> so. Well, you're getting good value out of it because the amount of exercise you do is you know minimal so it never really has to like work over time see i yeah, think it should value. measure like uh wrist actions and then count the calories because well, like, it doesn't i mean mine's I don't like want turbo that like holy crap i'd be like a fucking weightlifter like a like a heavyweight champion of the world oh, i thought you meant it would measure me uh 
It was going to measure something else. Yeah. Stop why, masturbating. That's, beep, that's... beep, beep. Wank alert. <laughs> oh, my Fitbit says I've got to stop tugging it quite so much. Okay. Oh, man, wouldn't you hate to just stop masturbating? Like, God. Oh, that'd be that would be works. miserable, eh? So end of, end of we well, well, welcome back, everyone. Um, I read a, a story this morning right. on the news. I thought I should tell you this news because I read it. It was interesting. Is it about that uh, plane crash? The one that crashed in the Ukrainian Airlines one that I no, think it was it's not shot down. Uh, I think it was shot down. It's much more uplifting. Uh, the family of a pair of miniature schnauzers were distraught when their dogs disappeared in thick fog while on a walk <laughs> in the hills. Right. Okay. They thought they would never see Charlie and Theo again. Right. Okay. Maybe they ran away because they, they hated their names. Okay. Like maybe they <laughs> They launched they launched a rescue campaign. Okay. And contacted mountain rescue teams, friends and family. Of course they did. Uh more than 120 people and two drones answered the call. Right. Answered the call. I like how to, the call to I like arms. How, two drones. Like it's like you, <laughs> they turned it's up. Like your, we will assist it's you. It's like your queue is popped <laughs> waiting for battlegrounds in World of Warcraft or something. Like <laughs> two drones have queued for the battle and uh five five housewives, one grandpappy. <laughs> <laughs> It's a real mixed bag of fucking local fuckers. Uh, after 96 hours of searching, right. as of last resort, the family decided to return to the spot where the dogs were last seen and cook sausages. Okay? Right. They they camped out overnight, calling the do- names of the dogs, uh-huh. and in the morning, they were th- shocked and thrilled when, to the smell of sausages, their beloved pets appeared. Right. Where... When they first appeared, it was like a mirage. I couldn't believe it was them," said Mrs. Hamson. <laughs> when did they just emerge from the mist that they were that they were uh, previously yeah. uh, consumed by and from, lost it from the fog. the fog? I'm surprised they didn't have like tentacles coming out of them, or like yeah. you know, what if they like, were? Possessed. What if they weren't the original? Yeah, dogs? yeah, they came back. Exactly. And we we're so pleased to see them, but after a week, we noticed uh, very, very strange behavioral changes in the dogs. They could only be <laughs> sated by the consumption of fresh blood. Yes. <laughs> Preferably from a virgin. Uh, the, I don't use it. The, the, the dog would still ru- their household. Lo- we love them. Routinely love them. stand up and stare at me in the night when I'd wake up in the middle of the night. Uh, <laughs> they had the power of flight and the ability to control other dogs <laughs> yeah. with their mind. <laughs> their eyes glow mysteriously. I don't know if that's an uplifting story at all. Actually, I don't feel uplifted. I'm finished by that. yet. All oh, right, sorry. My husband ran up the hill to grab them. As I was just shaking and crying, I could not function. Right, I'm angry now. The dogs are so gorgeous. They are part of our family. It would be horrible not to have them around. They absolutely love sausages. They have them every Sunday for breakfast. So if there was one food they were going to come back for, it was sausages. Now, I just love this story. Okay. Right. First of all, just I love it's so British, right? First of all, yeah. that they're so attached to these dogs that they get 120 people involved, plus two drones, yep. and camp out. Where they were last seen. If you're ever wondering what your average Tory voter looks like, that story like uh, encapsulates That's them, them perfectly. Oh my gosh, yeah. that is. Anyway, you, you know, I've seen a bunch of these things where some guy has gone on holiday or to France or whatever, and his kid's gone missing. And 20 years later, he's still looking for his kid, right? Because he's like, he's obsessed with it. He can't, he can't kick that bucket, you know, and his life's gone to shit right. because of it. That's, I can understand that. But when it's like your puppies, like, I, I think, I, I guess people these days are so attached to their pets in the same way as their children. It's, it's crazy. And I I, I, I I do get it. I'm just, I'm just, just the level of effort here, like 96 hours of camping. Right. You know, when were they going to stop? You know, when was enough enough? Until they found the mangled remains of their dogs and went on a further adventure to track down a, or, or a, death takes a them. bear that is loose yeah. in the English wilderness. I, I, I got into an argument on Twitter a few months back where, you know the way those people on Twitter post a thread? They always do this. Thread. It's okay to do blah and don't let anyone tell you otherwise blah 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 and there'll be loads of people going yeah woo and i'm like i didn't like everybody knows that like you don't need to make like a bold statement it's okay to not eat shit for breakfast it's fine <laughs> don't let anyone tell you you've got to eat the poop sandwich at breakfast or lunchtime Preach or dinner time and everyone's like yes yes yeah, sister we got that but and i just ignore those but then sometimes there's one saying how dare you tell me that your kids are more important than my pets. And I was like, they clearly are. Like, I'm sorry, but they are definitely, your pets are not as important as 
children. Yeah, That's well, your pets it. aren't going to contribute to the future of the human race. We're raising the next generation of people who are going to take care of all of our old asses and push the human race forward. Your pet is going to wipe his ass on the carpet, eat all of your food, and then die after like 15 years. So Let me ask you a question. If, if someone had a gun and said, I'm, I'm going to shoot this dog or I'm going to shoot you, you choose. Yeah. Is anyone going to say, take my life? Yeah, of course they are. Nowadays, no. fucking everybody. No. Yeah, everybody will You'd take have to a be bullet insane. for a dog. You would have to be insane. I could live that. with myself if I let that dog die. And here's another question for you. If you had kids, would you ever, ever choose the dog over your kids if there was the same situation no. no so there's clearly a rank there's a pecking order and the dog is worth less than a human being i'm sorry dog lovers i'm sorry cat lovers i don't think any of them the will disagree with you but i think they think that the pecking order is very very close do you know what i mean it's only a fraction of a of a millimeter below. no this person was like no you can't tell me that my 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 i love my dog the same way you love your kids i was like no no you don't like i've had kids and pets and believe me, it's not even close. <laughs> this is like, like I, I don't, ju- I don't ju- wake up in the night terrified about the thought that something will happen to my dog. <laughs> to Rufus. But I do wake up terrified of the thought that something will happen to my kids. Poor Captain Fluffy. I hope he's okay. <laughs> oh God! What if he can't find his favorite chew toy? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, it's not even close. Uh, it's. It, I mean, it's one of those things. It's. It's something that that the internet will uh, have a, a war about till the end of time because some people some people who don't have kids or or can have kids or whatever they'll they'll make up for that by having pets and thinking it's the same thing and that, i understand that i get it and then people who have kids think that they're better than everybody else because it's hard to have kids and they've had to go I through think some I'm better some i just troubles. think it's stupid to say that you understand the experience of being a parent because you have a cat yeah like i'm sorry but you really do have a problem if you think that you can relate in any way like I, I it's one of the worst conversations you have as a parent and I, i'm not one of those parents who goes around banging on about my kids all the time oh it's so hard oh, and, and lecturing people and making out like you're worth less than me because you haven't got kids i don't give a shit like I, I i don't i have plenty of friends who don't have kids and i don't think less of them i don't think i'm a better human being nothing but if they say honestly if they say with with the hand on their heart yes no i, I absolutely love my cat in the same way that you love your kids i'm sorry but in, and you you cannot it's impossible and you, you, if you have kids and then can still say that, then I think you're insane. So it doesn't work either way. If you haven't ever had kids, you don't know what it's like. If you do have kids and you still say, yeah, my, the order of love in my family goes little Timmy, little Tina, and then Mr. Fluffles. Mr. Fluffles is number one. Love him more than anything. I'm like, well, you're a fucking crazy person. But it, it, it's, imp- but it's impossible. I think for people who don't have kids yeah. or have chosen not to have kids yeah. for whatever reason, yeah. um, they're their animals are their kids and they absolutely are, yeah. they are they are and those you know, are the people case, like i mean in the in in some of those cases i can understand that like if there's just no possibility of having children but having absolutely. that those yeah, those yeah, yeah. mothering or fathering or parental i should say instincts um and wanting to like have something that you can pour that love into sort of thing. Sure. Fuck yeah, I understand it, but it's still not the same thing. I, I get what you're saying as well. Yeah. I think what happens is that gets deflected onto you, though, because you're then supposed to treat your pets the same way they treat their pet kids. We obviously live in this age of humanism where, you know, the, the human is the, the big priority in our society. You know, at the expense of everything else, at the expense of the planet, at the expense of, you know, uh, the billion chickens or 20 billion chickens, or how many we eat every year. It's insane. Um, I eat a billion myself. So Flax yeah. ate that many just over the last two weeks. So um, I watched this documentary on Netflix that I've been told not to watch by a bunch of people. Like everyone was like, don't watch it. It's really upsetting. And I was like, okay. I, I won't. Um, and so I, I didn't. And then like a, 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 about a week ago, I, I was like, actually, why am I not? Since when Since when did I not watch something based on someone telling me? Okay, the only other thing I haven't watched is The Human Centipede. Do you know what I mean? But oh, don't I, watch that. I kind of, do you know what I mean? Like, but that that's a feel, feels like fair enough. But everything it's else. It's just terrible. I, I haven't even heard of This Human Centipede. What is it? It's a, a movie. Are you serious? About yeah. you where... Can't, you know, you're joking. No, I've never heard of it. I, may, I mean, well, explain it You've to... You've heard of it. I might have, but I, it doesn't ring any bells right, right now. So The Human Centipede is a you, horror movie. Let's see if you uh, can guess, P-Flash, right. what it's about. All right. Look, Go on. It, it's, a, it's a horror movie. Tell me the 
the plot of the human centipede sips go all right it's uh so uh man starts rolling down a hill and uh gathers other men that stick to him into a big ball he's not of a men. human peel bug or a human <laughs> snowball <laughs> right okay all right what what if what if i told you <clears throat> that the human centipede is the result of an experiment by an evil scientist. Right. So it's kind of like the fly, but uh, it's a man who has fucking a million legs and and crawls around <laughs> under your skirting boards. <laughs> I, 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 I'd love to watch all that. of these. I love that. All right, that. so well, yeah. I'm going to give you more detail until you get the point, okay. all right? What if I told you that more than one person is involved in this experiment? Right. So, okay, so it's like that episode of Simpsons with Lisa's Petri dish, and there's, like, a little world, like, inside, and like, the so this man can make, like, uh, people into, like, uh, what are, look like little insects, and he can make them, like, go through mazes and stuff? All right, what if it was less sci-fi than that and was more the sort of surgery you would see in, say... A garage, <laughs> right? So it's kind of like a Frankenstein, but uh, with insect parts instead of uh, like bolts and no insects involved. No insects are involved. That's Does it have anything point. to do whatsoever with centipedes? Only no. vaguely. Is he is he attaching multiple people together? Yes. Oh wow! By the by, the mouth to ass. Mouth to okay, mouth to ass. Now we're talking. This sounds great. So um, the person at the front has the only mouth that's not attached to an Is this an adult horror film? Like, is it... (laughs) No, it's very much. Absolutely. Oh, it's not a sexy one. There's no sex in it whatsoever? (laughs) It's not not a sexy one, no. I mean, unless you're... (laughs) Really, really into <laughs> oh, shitting in people's mouths. That had and... never even crossed my mind, but actually, now you mention it, there's some that sick makes so much sense. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've, I've been watching a lot of vast to mouth <laughs> recently, so like, I think that that would fit in with like my my recent but it would consumption be of media. Ass to mouth to ass to mouth. Nice. That would be because it's a three person center. Oh, it's only three. Oh, I, so I, I see. I might. I envisioned like hundreds of people like in this. No, just three. Oh, right. Well, the nutrition gets less and less, and they can't make it that far. Yeah, that's right. part of the experiment. It, I think. He he did it with his three dogs first of all. Centipeded them. He peated them. All up. right. So he was. And so then, the idea is that they. So that. So one. So sorry, the food everyone. goes in one one side. And then makes its way down the chain, but obviously the last yeah. guy gets like the worst yeah. fucking deal. So what does he do? Just sew their mouths to like the yeah yeah their, yeah. Okay. He stitches them up, so they right. they come around from the surgery and they're stitched to the other guy's ass. I'd be coming around so too. Like, Jeez, that's <laughs> there's a hot. dude, there's a dude, and then a girl in the middle, and then a dude at the back. Right, I think. And the guy at the front was like. He, he has to eat because he's starving. So he feels the poop coming. He's like, I'm really sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> like apologizing. It's horrible. That's, it is horrible. That's, it's awful. Yeah, that's, a, that's alarming. That's like, ge- a genuinely awful idea. Yeah. Something to consider. Just genuinely bad. Uh, but on the other hand, this, this movie I watched is called Don't Fuck With Cats. It's like a documentary. Oh, I heard about that watch, one. Yeah, I've heard about that watch one. watch a lot of this stuff. Yeah. I watch a lot of like murder mysteries and sort of stuff of detective-y stuff and how people got caught and things. Well, this is like an internet internet sleuthing thing right that like and the person that they caught was active on the on the internet as well yeah so this guy had been like posting videos about him sort of hurting cats some of them obviously there's some some little bit of footage of of some of them and it's quite unpleasant um obviously because no one wants to see a little cat being hurt or whatever but um, at the same time, we routinely just watch, you know, humans kill each other and chop each other up and do all sorts of horrible stuff to each other, don't we? Like every centipede a... themselves and and some cats see that on TV and then yeah. they go out and hurt other cats. Right. Stop cat <laughs> this on is the cat big violence. Problem, I see. Thank you. In 2020, that's going to be our Triforce campaign. Yeah. Stop, Stop cat on cat violence. Yeah. Anyway, I didn't think it was all that bad actually, but what it did make me realize was. A little bit of my vegetarian, the vegan trigger. I was triggered, right? right? From a, the point of view of kind of just being, I was kind of angry because people were so so uptight about little cats being hurt, but they don't give a shit about stuffing their gobs full of like really cheaply made meat. Well, <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah, no, yeah, but bullshit. I mean, they, nobody sees the nobody really sees or chooses to see the process of that. But uh, like an actual like um, like a slaughterhouse is 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 like a, a, an abuse of like obviously. But like this is this is somebody who's showing signs of being like a, a sociopath, which is uh, which is very alarming as well. Right? Yeah, like, I mean, he, he clearly people was. People see that from a mile away and think. 
like, okay, well, next thing he'll be fucking like, you know, make it getting worse, gunning people down in the shopping mall or something. Absolutely, you, you know what I mean. I mean, and like, that, obviously, obviously, killing humans is also a warning sign that you're a psychopath. Of course, but killing yeah. ca- cats is like the prerequisite for uh-huh. that, and it feels like, but it feels like cruelty and casual animal cruelty is this thing which is just part of our world, like pet shops you know, are still a thing and puppy farms and all of these things, you know, cheaply sourced and smuggled in pets right, and but animals. People, people and don't care about people not looking people. after their pets properly. Like Pe- People don't care about people. Like it's easy to be sympathetic for a mistreated animal because animals are innocent by their nature. They, are, they, they don't act with malice or not many of them do. My fucking cat sometimes does, but you know, generally <laughs> speaking, they're they're very chill and they 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 live for survival and instinct. And you don't think that they're plotting to really fuck people over. They don't get they don't have the same evil in them that people do. They have a more natural like it, there's Innocence. nothing evil I when see. a bigger bird eats a smaller bird. It's just doing was, what it does. Yeah, I think that was the argument that's given to me as well. And also that you know, cats are our pets. We don't eat cats. They're 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 separate. And maybe because they're malicious and evil and thoughtful and well, some I think some countries eat cats. Though. Yeah, they do in China for sure. Yeah. You see them in the if you go to the street markets, especially in sort of more rural China, you'll see them just hanging up like uh like you know when you get if you've ever been to Chinatown, you walk around, you'll see in the window they hang loads of ducks, uh-huh. right? They do the, in in some parts of China. You'll see cats instead. They're like skinned and cooked, or ready to cook. Look I mean, at their attitude cat. towards animals is even worse than anything. Yeah, you just else, eat really. anything. They'll fucking it's eat just... anything. I mean, you know, but that comes from their history. Yeah, the history of like there's been starvation in China for fucking such a long time that yeah, cats fucking delicious when you starve it, and then it becomes a thing. You know, yeah, it, even if you're centipeded up, you'd still you're starving. Yeah. You'd eat like you peed it up. Peed it up. Man, what if you were <laughs> centipeded to a cat's ass? Uh, like I, I wouldn't want it. I would not want to eat cat shit. Like I think Kill it's. Me. I think cat shit. Is I've worse seen than the human. shit that. Well, then I get a dog's a dog's dog ass. Dog shit's pretty, pretty bad. bad. Too, yeah. oh. Dog. Honestly, I've been picking up dog poop for the last two months. It's gross. Because eh? now we've got our dog, right? And it, I could eat that. It's whipped cream on it. No, it's disgusting. Yeah, it's gross, but it's yeah. like. I don't know why I find it more objectionable than the shit that came out of my kids. Like, the shit that came out of my kids was way more disgusting, especially when they were little babies. It was fucking gross. And sometimes it's all up their back yeah. and fucking everywhere. Yeah. And you got to get them in the shower and clean shit off. And they're sick everywhere and everything. It's like, ugh. But it, you just kind of get on with it. But with a dog or a cat, you're like, eh. Even though it's just there, you just pick it up with a little bag in the bin. No problem. Yeah. But it's, it grosses me out. The smell is much worse than human shit. There must be some big... Uh, psychological thing. It's going on dangerous there. too. Like, you know, people with dogs, when they walk them in the park and stuff and they shit, like, even if they pick the shit up, if there's like a smear of shit left over, I'm sorry, everyone. That can be really dangerous. Like, if a kid fucking <laughs> it's, it's, lands it's, it's in it or bad something, for your, the kid's you can go eyes blind. If it ever stuff. gets in like, a kid's eyes, yeah, crazy. yeah, there's like little. You got to be really careful. There yeah, there's all sorts yeah. of shit. Like, and cat cat shit especially is very, very dangerous, very toxic. Yeah, you can get toxoplasmosis. Yeah, I think. that is according, it. To, according to my sources. AKA the movie Train Spotting. Right. Then yeah, it's it's real bad. So, sorry about this, everyone. I was thinking it was going to be a nice. What are you uplifting... apologizing for? They New know what podcast. they came here for. They what? know what they came here for. This is what it we is. It done, is what we, it is, like, folks. We, I didn't do anything. I haven't done anything for weeks. Like I've just been sitting around, like doing dad stuff. I got a real tree this year for Christmas, though. I didn't bring down the artificial tree. I I was too lazy to get it out of the attic. <laughs> what, so you had to you drove across to a Christmas tree place? No, I just or what, I you went to fucking B and Q. They just had them there. Oh right, got we got one from uh, my kid's school. Has like a, a tree sale <laughs> to raise money for the school and stuff. Yeah, but we we only got a small one because we had to raise it up. Oh, because of the puppy, we can't have it on the ground. Course, so we had to put it on like a little yeah. thing so that she couldn't get to it because she's fucking. Any anything like we walk when I'm walking the kids to school, bring the dog. She loves to say hello to all the the other kids at the school and all the other dogs on the walk. And she, you know she does a poo and all the rest of it. And you know you got to take them for a walk in the morning. But if she sees anything on the ground, she's picking that up and she's carrying it with her until I get her to drop it. So if she sees a stick that's like a mile long, she's picking that up. She's trying to carry it along. Nice. If she sees like a cigarette butt. She's picking that up, and you got to open her mouth and drag it out. She found an old sock, and she fucking (laughs) ran ahead 
Like, she's on the lead. Lead is maximum. She, like, runs and grabs this sock, and she's trying to make a break for it. Like, this is, like, the best find she's ever had on this walk. Because holy shit. Because every time I'm unloading the, the tumble dryer now, she's waiting for me to drop a sock, and she'll grab it and run off to the other side of the room and hide under the sofa. <laughs> she's just chewing on this sock. Even though she has a million chew toys. Yeah. Do you reckon it's, like, fucking when everything's new, when you're, like, a little kid or a baby? You know, you, you take, like, your kid to the zoo or whatever... And, you know, there's like a lion and a giraffe and all this shit. But they're all they're interested in is like the Peppa Pig ride at the entrance or the yeah, yeah. Or the fucking or the, the digger in the street outside. Do you know, right, or the right. guy with the pneumatic hammer. Yeah. Or yeah. whatever. Yeah. That's, that's what it's like because everything's new, right? Yeah. But actually, the animals and stuff, they've already seen those all in the books. They're boring. Yeah, <laughs> they're fucking already elephant. boring. Can't put it in your mouth. Who cares? That's pretty much... The way kids think of things. Because your dog's quite young, right? So everything's new. Do you she's reckon like she's going to get off, over yeah. the sock thing? Or is that going to be no, like no, a... No, no, no. I don't think dogs that's ever do. Thing, I think they do just like... Do you reckon that's like a sign of a sociopath as well? <laughs> no, she's it's just like... simple. Yeah, I think, Sorry, I think that's it. Dog. I think they are just simple. They don't really progress past a certain point. You can train them and stuff yeah. like that. But like, uh, usually, usually like, however they are as like personality-wise doesn't change much. Like they're, ha- you know... Like I had a dog and like he's fucking always, always, always looking for food like that, like just instinctively. That's all they do. Right. So like if he, if he had some sense that like some food was being prepared or or something, he would just be sitting there waiting for something to fall on the ground. Even if it was like scalding hot, he'd be like crying, right. eating like fucking yeah. burning hot dogs that fell on the floor or something like, you know what I mean? It's just <laughs> they're, they're crazy. <laughs> crazy any so anyway imagine like so let's just put, make a story right you and you and p flax have moved in together okay we're okay. gonna make it we're making a story now nice okay we've moved it's in, in a parallel world <laughs> you two have moved in together I, 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 evil friends. scientist has sewed flax's mouth to my asshole <laughs> no whoa i don't want to be so dear and now asshole. he's looking for a third person to get involved <laughs> so he finds lewis uh he he beckons lewis over to his house of the promise of uh, riveting discussions on alchemy or uh, for whatever. So Lewis, of course, says, "Yeah, great." <laughs> oh fuck. Okay, no, sure. Um, I've I've invited you two in, and no, which one's going to be the front? No. So you two have moved in together. You're living together, right? In in, in a town called Buttermere in Cumbria, okay. and you, you've taken your your lovely dog, your lovely doggo out. Charlie what are, we and gonna, Theo. are we are we are we a couple? You're a couple. Right. Yeah, you've taken your so, dog. You so got- Sips and I are. Lovers, no kids. Yeah. Are we willing to spend ninety six hours doing a um a, a wait around for the dogs after they go missing? Well, this is what I'm going to ask. Right. Yeah, I'll do so, anything that my husband Sips wants to do. I'm right. Very, you know. But you're going out for a walk with your lovely pooch. What's her name? Your pooch? Um, uh, Agnes. 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 What a name. The name of my grand, my my ninety six year old grand. See, it comes around. It they comes do, around. Yeah. It comes around. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently the name Headley Headley is becoming popular again as well. That's like a Deadly Headley. That's a real 1920s yeah. name. Isn't I it? wanted a, a, a human name. I think it's funnier, and it's just better. That I, I think it's demeaning to call a dog Mister Fluffles. Man, it's 2020. Give, you should have just called name. her Steve. <laughs> Good have done, or Dave. Well, well, it's Agnes. Right. Also, it's, it's appropriate because she's my nan's name because she's so wrinkly. She looks a bit like my nan with all yeah, the she is very wrinkly, wrinkly. just like you yeah. know. Anyway, so you're out on Red Pike, which is like a little hit moor, I guess, in near Cumbria. Right. It's a thick fog. Okay. And Agnes, she scampers away from you. It's uh, chasing a sock. She smells a sock, disappears into the fog. What's happening? Right. What are you doing? Give me your reactions. I'm calling, Aggie, Aggie. And if she doesn't come back, I get one of the kids. I say, go up the hill and see if you can find Aggie. Well, Sips is I've with you. I've uh, got oh. my Fitbit. Also, you don't have I've any kids. I've got my wireless a- AirPods. Uh, and I'm listening to um, I don't know uh, <laughs> Gucci the, the, Gang. Yeah, Gucci Gang, really loud. So I haven't noticed that any. So he's busy. I'm waving my arms at Sips. Yeah. Oh, he never I'm, listens I'm, anymore. I'm oh. vibing out on my. <laughs> All my, right. So my um, the dog ran up the hill into the fog. Yeah. Well, it ran into the fog. You don't how, even know how where. how big is this hill? Quite big. Yeah. How thick is the fog? Well, sometimes they call that mountain rescue. Th- 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 thog's very thick. Thick fog. It's the thog. thog is the thog is the thick. The thog with the okay. thick. You can taste so it. So, am I thinking, or am I thinking that if I went into this fog, <laughs> I would get lost? Would I get lost in the fog? Oh yeah, you'd be lost like the dog as well, and that we'd have to lure what you. What if back. you? What if you entered the fog and emerged on the other side, and there you were? You found yourself in Narnia all of a sudden. Oh, wow. Oof. 
fuck, there's, an, there's a lion there. And you're like, boring. <laughs> Body diggers. Do you guys do any ass to mouth here or uh, <laughs> <laughs> can I just leave? <laughs> it goes back well, into the I fog. Guess, uh, I need to get back we home. Call, we call the dog a load and try and get some food and tempt her back. She doesn't come back after like, I don't know, I'd give it a good few hours. I'd hope for the 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 thog to clear. Right, right. If it doesn't clear, it's like shit. We got to go home. It's dark. What can I yeah, do? The dark. dog's gone. I mean, that's it. We've lost the dog. And then I guess we'd go home. No, come back the next day, try and find her, bring some extra treats that she likes yeah. and stuff. And I think most people that have dogs are well versed in a, a, a different types of bacon. Right, like you bring bacon treats with you and stuff everywhere you go when you have a dog too. you bring stuff with so you so sure. in my backpack yeah in my backpack i just have some strips of bacon so we can light a campfire cook up that bacon dog will be back in two seconds just like the sausage people did that's a good idea the smell of food yeah, now you know yeah. how to lure back now you know how dog. to get them back you know yeah. you just gotta have the right it's like steve right with survival tips or whatever or fucking who's that guy who goes Ray out Mears. and fucking eats shit yeah him see he's not, like i'm not even saying the name of the other so-called survival expert, because he sh- he shall not be named here. Ray Mears Ray is Mears the survival is the, expert, not the only one. he who shall not be named. Begins Eating with grubs out of a fucking and, log. Yeah, but makes survive. makes a mockery of the idea of, of proper survival and wilderness. Drinking I will not st- speak his name. Are right. these guys all like F X, like SAS or Royal Marines? No, and stuff? Ray Mears is just a lad who has studied. Right, it okay. He can build a canoe out of like a fucking tampon and everything, and the dude's fucking <laughs> genius. Because <laughs> I I've been watching. Um, my wife started watching the, this, like um, you know, the one that was on Channel Four, the SAS one, Who Dares Wins or whatever. Oh, you tough enough. Yeah, that, that the one. one. Yeah, the one where like they start with like twenty five people and they would it down to like because it has like a low acceptance rate or whatever it's pretty interesting actually the dropout rate for the ss is the highest of any special forces in the yeah, world yeah it looks nuts it's though i mean hard. fuck they gotta do a lot of hiking and stuff I th- yeah, after one hike i'd be like you know what this isn't for me <laughs> fuck this. i wanted to infiltrate bases not go on hikes he's disappeared into the fog <laughs> <laughs> so get the vegan sausages and start cooking them <laughs> he'll come right back <laughs> open the mountain <laughs> dew <laughs> <laughs> for my Start human sprinkling centipede, Chino one. dust on the rocks. He'll be back in no time. <laughs> oh fucking hell! Just blowing like magic orange dust into the wind. <laughs> <laughs> just emerge from the fog. Oh, anybody's got some Cheetos? I remember fucking SAS seriously because when I was in cadets, there was one camp that we were every year, which was the SAS camp, and it was like the one which everyone was terrified of because. We were like a load of 15, 16 year old nerds. Where and... where was it? Where did you go? Because we used to go to an army camp near Minehead. Mm, it was because I was, was also in the cadets school. I was in the, the there were we had three sections. You know the the army, navy, air force. They were all three. And it was a lot of kids in it. Yeah, we we only had one combined um, force. But, but I remember SAS camp being an absolute just a hellish weekend. Of did you have um, CS, CS gas training like tear no. gas training? Oh we had that God. at army camp. So we, we went in with the gas masks on in the room. They filled it with tear gas. And we had to drink some water through a little tube that comes out of the gas mask to show that you don't have to take the gas mask off to have a drink. Then we had right. to lift up our gas mask, eat a crisp, and put the mask back on to show that just uh, you could hold your breath and eat a crisp and then put the mask back on and you'd be all right. <laughs> Standard training. What kind of crisp was it? It was just a ready sewed crisp. And then at the end, <laughs> we all had to line up just in the room. One. They open the door and then you take your mask off. You have to say your name, your rank, and like um, what school you Serial go to. Serial number. And then they let you out. And when the moment the oxygen hits your Pretty face. Flex, cadet, <laughs> one, one, four. <laughs> Do I get my crisp now? And then once the oxygen hits your face, that's it. That's your ass. You're, it was horrible. I never oh did. I, I was in, um, I never w- went to scouts, but I did uh, cubs, cub, like the one before scouts. You know, you had like beavers, yeah, yeah. cubs. and So I was in cubs and cubs, you had like, you had these like fucking stupid ass long sleeve, like tight shirts. I don't know if you remember the yeah, gray ones. Yeah, they were ones. tight, right? And then you'd, it, and then like you'd put those, you'd have to fucking sew those stupid ass badges on the sleeve uh, and, and on your scarf I can tell you stuff. really loved it. Oh, man. Put the stupid fucking shirt on. You know what? You know what badges. it was like? It was like World of Warcraft is now, right? Like you, you, you log in and you play 
like Lewis, Lewis knows what I'm talking about because he complains about this all the time. You log in and there's some fucking track pant wearing sweat lord with his fucking all of his achievements and his fucking achievement armors and mounts and stuff. And there, there you are with like fucking the like vanilla like clown gear, <laughs> Not, no achievements, nothing. And you can't even like see how you how do you get to the point where he has got to that stat? Yeah, how has he got like sixty nine badges on? And you just list? know that he goes home and his parents love him and stuff. And you and then meanwhile you're just like, oh fuck, I don't have any badges. <laughs> It's not. It's not this. Right? His, pa- his parents clearly love him, obviously. But like, I think the other. It's like the way it is. It's a little bit like not playing World of Warcraft. It's like playing Fallout Shelter or something, or where you've got like your character and the parents are playing the kid's character. Right? They're like the kid is our character, and we're gonna because they're the ones sewing the fucking badges on and forcing him to do stuff yeah. and like reading the manual and all the shit. Because Cubs are like seven years old. Do you know what no, I mean? they're, they're not. Like, That's the fucking. Beaver there was like thing. the easy ones, right? Like sewing. Cub Scouts are. Helping really your young. grandma Cubs across the road and stuff. Like there were badges like for like easy stuff. But like eight this, and ten. The, these guys always had like the fucking like outlandish ones. Like, you know, fucking go to Disney World in Florida. Okay, fine. You win. You've got the badge for that one. <laughs> I never been. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like it was always some dumb shit. Like that, you know, like it was always something like you know, you fucking badge master would turn up and he'd have his box <laughs> all fucking painted perfectly and he'd have a million badges and his stupid fucking scarf was covered in badges and stuff and his dad You know, was for like, someone who hates it, you sure are jealous of all those His badges. dad was like a volunteer, you know, they all, they all the fucking people like the the scout masters or whatever you called them had those fucking stupid jungle book names and stuff okay yeah and like yep. and i was just at the back smoking and you know fucking like you know trying to pick up at chicks. nine look there's no girls there <laughs> <laughs> no, you fucking yeah i was like nine <laughs> too cool for this shit i don't even want a badge i got this smoker's badge look at that. and i got the fucking pussy slayer badge on this side <laughs> I remember one week I was like, okay, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to really work hard get some badges. I got like six badges and I was like, oh fuck, awesome. Okay, like I'm starting my collection of badges here. And then I turned up and there's just like this guy that had like fucking like 75 badges. And I was like, oh, well, fuck this. I'm like I'm done. I was I was the fucking head cub of my cub Jesus. troop. Jesus. The senior six. You were the, the fucking the, badge master. I, I bet, was the badge guy. Jesus. I was the badge That's guy. Disgusting. I had a lot of badges. I went to cubs every week. Because the because the church, right, that we had that had it in, like all churches, is actually just a fucking disgusting <laughs> front <laughs> for badge collecting. For badging. <laughs> right, they, they make out the oh, yeah, people in the church. We let, yeah. we let the cubs use our our hall for free because we're good. But if you want to keep that hall, you better turn up at church on Sunday. Yeah. Because that's all they fucking care about, right? Is squeezing people into their church because that'll fool their omnipotent God. He'll suddenly think, oh, this church is very popular. Like he's some senile old man who's up there <laughs> just sort of barely in charge of his own bladder, let alone, you know, the universe and everything. So God is going to be fooled when you drag a bunch of kids reluctantly to church and plonk them in the back row. God's fooled. We got the full church here, God. Look at all these happy kids looking at their watches and desperate to go and home. And now we will sing hymn number one one four. Hail thou won't sell a tape one's ass to another man's mouth. <laughs> I got the badge. The for Lord that. said, "Thou shalt not pee." I can guess what badge I got this weekend, guys. I made a human centipede with my dad, my brother. <laughs> I was sewing badges on, and I thought, "Hey, what if I stitched his mouth to my <laughs> and asshole?" Then I, and then I got a friend of his and stitched and his then, mouth. You know what? I got another badge for shitting in his mouth, and I got another badge for <laughs> you know, fuck off with your badge. When I when I sewed the badge to my sleeve, I ate it. And then shat it in his mouth, he pulled it out, sewed it in his arm, ate it, shat it in the other guy's mouth, he pulled it out, sewed it on that shitty badge. Yep, that's that's Cub Scouts for you. Gross. Yep, Holy shit. But so, I, yeah, because I went every Sunday, my mom was like, we got at church on Sunday. I was like, I don't want to go. She was like, you got to go. But we can't let the Cubs down. I was like, can't let the Cubs down. I swore. I swore a promise. An oath. Man. Did you did. so? Did you both regularly attend church as as a as a kid? Yeah, yeah. Every Sunday. Every Sunday for like years. Fuck. Yeah, me too. Oh, I never did. Yeah, I, my 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 mom and dad took me to church like maybe twice, I think, and that was it. My mom so is not turned religious. Out the way you are. You should. She's, let God a, she's an life. atheist. She is an atheist. But we went to church to support the Cub right. Scouts. 
Me too. And then when I was when I was younger, a, a lot of my my friends were religious. They had all kinds of cool youth groups they'd go to with the church. So I would go to church because if you went to the church enough times, you could go to the youth group and all the rest of it. It's all a con. See, it's all just a fucking con. I tried to take my kids to church like recently, like maybe two years ago or something. And fuck, they hated it. Like it was just like, we can't go again. Like <laughs> the first time we were like, we're going to well, go to church. And they're like, all right. They, they're like, Sunday they, school. That's why they have Sunday school for the yeah, kids. Why they're did you go? To be like a fun activity day. Well, we just, well, it was like more like a community thing, you know, like we, there was like, they were doing this thing for like around, um, it was, I think it was like two years ago. It was like kind of like, like autumn and they, they were doing like a, like a, like kind of like a food drive and they, they did like a harvest festival. Yeah. Harvest festival. That's the one. Yeah. So we were like, okay, cool. Like we've got like a bunch of like food and we'll get some more, more stuff and, and let's take it. And like, it might be fun for the kids. There might be stuff for them to do there. And then they can see what it's like to like sit in on a, like, you know, mass or whatever they had and stuff and um ah oh, fuck me they hated it like they just it was just too, uh, too boring i think like well no i mean it is it's like this ritualized weird thing for adults and it's supposed to be so it's a different thing for everyone it's for people who have real problems but kids don't have problems like the kids don't want no. to think ask us divine power to pray for their injured I mean, joints I, I, or their well, me and my wife we don't their... really have problems either actually the only problem we had was that we decided to go to church that one time and that was a bit of a problem <laughs> uh, so so, so yeah, I mean, I used to go to Sunday school, which was like held in a little sort of shack next to the next to the church. And, you know, it was fine. It was just like an activity thing to do in the mornings. You'd meet a different crowd of people. You'd be taught yeah. God stuff. And it wasn't too, too bad. Like, I remember, though, did I tell, have I ever told you about my Santa theory about this? I probably have. I found out that Santa wasn't real about the same time... I was able, I realized that God probably wasn't real too. <laughs> right. right. Like th there was like, at, at the same, at the very, what a uh, day, what, what a, a day that day. is, by the way. The day I became Double a Double whammy. I looked down, I noticed one hair on my balls at the time as well. <laughs> <laughs> So obviously I found out this Santa wasn't real and I don't know how old I was, probably about seven or eight or something like this. And I, I, I um, then obviously went to Sunday school and it was still very fresh in my mind. OK, like, you know, I was like very shocked that this Santa lie that I'd been fed for a long time. And there were all these guys trying to teach me about Jesus. And at that point, I was just like, and, and God and stuff. And this sort of man with a beard who had a lot of parallels to Santa. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He looked, he's like an old grey bearded whiz, wise man. There's no evidence that he ever existed. He so somehow got all these crazy magical powers, like being able to go to everyone's house and deliver all the presents. Where did he get them from? I don't know. Even at that age, I was questioning Santa. I was like, how does Santa operate? And they're just like, oh, it's magic. And obviously I was aware that magic wasn't real. It was all trickery and, and, and not real. Um, and so I also like I linked that to God and I was like, well, look, if God is an old bearded man and he's magic, he's clearly not real either. And, and I, I, I wonder whether the rise of Santa has caused the downfall of people believing in God. Is that? Well, God so, doesn't um, visit your house every year and give you all of the, the junk that you've ever wanted. No, but he knows if you've been naughty and he, he knows if know. you've been good. Which is a very godlike thing to do. I think that's a very I interesting think, theory, I th Lewis. I think appeasing Santa uh, yearly is more achievable than a lifetime <laughs> of appeasing God. You know what I mean? Listen, uh, to appease God, you just have to, you could do whatever the fuck you want. You just have that's to go and tell true. a that's priest. The exact that's opposite true. You have to go and tell a priest thing. and confess. No, that's only And then he gives you, he lets you off. That's literally what it is. All right, first of all, there are mortal sins. There are mortal sins there's no coming back from. The priest will be like, I'm sorry, buddy, I can't help you. And he pushes a button and the fucking confession booth tips up and you fall out. It's like a, it's right? like a portal. Yeah, <laughs> you just he pushes a button, the bottom of it opens up and you disappear into the, into hell. That's So there are definitely sins you can't be forgiven for. All right, You can ask for forgiveness and maybe God can forgive you. But the priest's like, hey, buddy, it's out of my hands. You'll have to wait till judgment day and see what they say then. Yeah. That's the only way. I mean, the priest can give you, you know, if you wanked... A, on your fucking cousin's underpants or something. I don't know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that that might be were... forgivable. Right. It's not right. a specific memory. Trust <laughs> yeah. me, I don't I have mean, any that, cousins. How is that even a sin? 
That's not even. I don't even know what's a sin. No, anymore. you know. What? Listen, like, listen, listen, is listen. That, listen. That, is, that is that a sin? Well, because it's not in the Ten Commandments. Is whacking on your cousin's underpants a sin? I don't think it <laughs> you is. You know what I like about I, the thing I like about Santa is that he's he's simple, right? Like, no, nobody speaks on behalf of Santa because with Santa, it's just like be good all year. There's no Santa priests. Yeah, be You're good right. all year, well, yeah, but and Santa's he'll bring very he'll bring vague. you some presents, right? But with God, there's no one making money man, off Santa. Everybody, right. everybody <laughs> speaks speaks for God or or feels like there's some sort of conduit to God or whatever. The worst ones are people like multiple murderers who are like on death row, and all of a sudden they've like uh, become born again Christians and they found God and they're looking forward to like His sanctuary and stuff. And like I don't understand how it works, but fuck me, you killed like. 15 people. I don't think there's any sanctuary for you there. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter how much you say it. Like, uh, I, I think you're out, out of the running. I think, I don't think, I, you're I not a contender. I like the idea though. <laughs> but if you, rede- like, I like the idea that people can redeem themselves, especially if they did something like, you know, like a six, like a 15 year old boy, I don't know, who gets in with a bad crowd and joins a gang and accidentally, accident, like shoots a gun and accidentally kills someone right. with it. I like the idea that, he can be redeemed and won't, you know, even, you know, and, and will go on to, you know, he doesn't have to <laughs> become be Santa Claus. For, for, <laughs> <laughs> he can become the next Santa Claus. Yes. Yeah. Or whatever. Like, yeah. I just, that, I mean, that I, I just, I have hope that, that people are good and, and not that there's no, a God. But like, a, you know, somebody like, somebody uh, you know, somebody who uh, is like, um, yeah, like a victim of their circumstances, sure, but then goes on to like do some really, really nasty premeditated shit, like beyond rehabilitation. Yeah, like 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 strangling a cat or sewing people ass to mouth. You can't become a born again Christian for Christ's sake. Like it's not how it works. Like what the fuck? You you condemned yourself when when you when you when you did all that nasty shit, like there's no coming back. Yeah, like no, nobody fucking but the believes thing is, the you. church needs the church is desperate. They don't take it. Yeah, that's us. true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, this guy's high profile. He might be able to spread the spread the good word. Oh, God, from anyway. behind bars. Thank you, everyone. That is that is a podcast. Uh, we got we got stop covered a wide range of subjects. Man, did we ever? Uh, well, but we're back. We're back on a back with a we're bang. Back. We're, we're back. back. We're back Baby. in full force. Whether you like it or not. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Eat it. You may not agree with any of the things we've said. We're very all over the place. Eat, oh, if you shit. feel angry, there's helplines available. I don't know the numbers for them. Maybe just like one eight hundred ass to mouth or something. I don't know. Maybe Try just something. fucking post about it on Twitter that you didn't like it. I thought Chinese person was very offensive today. Lewis <laughs> was pushing his vegan agenda. Uh, they were they were very very anti Christian. Uh, they clearly worship Satan. And uh, I encourage all of you to pray for them. Yeah. So, so yeah. on that note, hail Satan, and uh, we'll see you guys next, hail next Satan. week. Love you lots, and uh, thanks for listening, and bye. All right. Bye. Goodbye.